Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Monday, April uh, 3rd. Uh, it's great to be with you today. I hope you're able to join us yesterday uh, with uh, Palm Sunday worship, either in person or online. Uh, and of course, this is Holy Week. Um, we won't have worship on Wednesday, but two very special worship services, one on Monday, Thursday, the night that Jesus was betrayed, the night he began Holy Communion. Uh, uh, that's uh, Monday, Thursday, and, and uh, this year the choir is going to do a very special cantata uh, that's embedded in the worship service, and of course we'll have communion alike like as well. And then on Friday, uh, we're going to focus on Jesus' words, last words that were recorded that he spoke, it is finished. Um, and, and we're going to do that from the, uh, the, um, the eyes of those who were there on, under the cross. So again, two very special worship services during uh, this Holy Week leading up. Uh, to Easter. But we're going to focus on uh, Palm Sunday in our devotions this week. We're going to, it's recorded three times uh, in, in the Gospels. And so I thought we'd take a look at those. Um, each one tells us something a little different uh, about this event called Palm Sunday. Just just so for the record, I guess, uh, this was prophesied in Zechariah hundreds of years before Jesus came. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, bringing life gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey uh, and so e even as we'll see in these uh, readings in the gospels it points back at this at this prophecy being fulfilled uh, in jesus entering jerusalem uh, on palm sunday so we're going to start with matthew uh and it begins like this um as they approached jerusalem and came to bethphage on the mount of olives so um uh, we'll see in bethany and bethphage who are both very close to Jerusalem. I, I, when I was in uh, Israel, I walked from Bethany, uh, where he raised Lazarus from the dead, right, uh, into uh, the uh, Mount of Olives and, and into Jerusalem. It's really a short walk. It took us maybe 20 minutes. Uh, so um, that, so he's, as they approached Jerusalem, walking along there, right, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken to the prophets. Say uh, to, daughter of to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And so uh, a, a couple of things I, I want to pull from this uh, for us. The first thing is that, hey, Jesus planned this, right? Uh, this wasn't just by chance this happened. He sent... Uh, these two disciples to to find the donkey and he said hey uh someone says what are you doing there you're gonna say the lord needs it they're gonna let you have a donkey right so jesus was planning this uh and then uh i, I think we have to remember that matthew was uh written to all christians but especially to jewish christians and one of the characteristics of the book is, is that uh, again and again and again it points out how old testament prophecy across in the old testament right was fulfilled in jesus and, and so uh, it says, hey, this was, took place to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet. So this was the Messiah that was prophesied uh, throughout uh, the thousands of years in the Old Testament, right? From the prophets uh, going all the way back to Genesis, uh, the seed of the woman will crush the head of, the, uh, of Satan, right? The snake. So uh, it's pointing that out. And, and, not, and everything's going to be thrown out into the open here. I think that's so important. How many times in Jesus' ministry, when he would heal somebody, he would say, don't tell anybody. Why? Why would he say that? Because he had work to do, uh, and he needed to move around and do that work. But now, everything's going to be right out in the open. Who he is, that he had come, that he fulfilled prophecy, and what all this meant, right? That he was this one that was prophesied in the Old Testament who brings salvation, right? Who brings life. The righteous one, righteous in our place on the cross, right? Uh and, and he brings life, this salvation. He saves us. So it goes on here then. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. So everything is out of the open here, right? Uh, everything is... Um, uh, meant to be seen, meant to be proclaimed, that, that, that Jesus is this king, this Messiah that was prophesied. Uh, and, and in fact, what they cry out is, is almost 
that is from the Spirit of God himself, right? Now, now, now certainly they, they knew these words from the Old Testament, but the crowd got it, who this was. They said, uh, uh, Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna means save now. Save now, Son of David. Now, why would they say that? Because their life was very, very tough. Very, very tough, right? And they wanted to, they, they, they wanted to be saved from the boot of the Romans and 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 the hopelessness that they were in, and and the uh, and and the uh, spiritual uh, weight that was put on them from their spiritual leaders. They needed to be saved. They wanted the one to come and save them, and that's who Jesus was. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're the you're the one that comes from heaven to come to save us. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And so on this Palm Sunday or, or we, that we celebrated last week, I think, how do we apply this to our hearts, this idea, who is this? Well, uh, just as uh, Jesus didn't want to keep it hidden, that it, it was to reveal to the people who were in Jerusalem, this was written down so we could see this, that he planned it, that he wants everyone to know it, he is the king that was promised, the righteous king who would lay down his life on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, who would, in a sense, take our sin on himself and give us his righteousness that we might be declared not guilty, right? Uh, take our death on himself and give us his life so that we know that we might live with him every day and forever. Uh, he's the one, the one that, Hosanna, the one that comes to save us. Uh, and, and so for each of us, we've got to answer this question. Who is this? Uh, this is the one. What does it mean? We're going to receive him. We're going to trust him. We're going to live with him. We're going to walk with him. We're going to let him be our king. Uh, and, and this king will keep us. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. And his power will keep us in every moment, in every situation, and finally take us to be with himself uh, forever and ever. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, uh, you are the king of kings. You entered Jerusalem. You want everybody to know and you want us to know that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the righteous one who, have come, who has come to save us. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, when we ask that question, who is this, we might say you are the one. That we might, you might strengthen our faith by your spirit. Uh, or maybe for the first time convict us uh, of this uh, trust that you would have us live in with you uh, every day. And we pray, Lord, that you might use us, that others might know you as the King of Kings, the one who comes to save us. Uh, we praise your name and thank you. Amen. I will see you tomorrow. May God be with you. Bye-bye.